Welcome to Healing Diaries, where I hopefully will be making a series where you and I both can take small steps to tune deeper into self and further healing through this heartache. Um, I'm slowly and consciously processing change. I try to begin each day with the intention of deep gratitude for all parts of my life, starting with my body, from hygiene to intuitive movement and lots of loving nourishment. Sometimes eating in the morning is challenging, given there is still a bit of inconsistency with my appetite, but I've always tried to turn to a massive smoothie. I found this quote to be really beautiful. Someone asked me recently, if you can sum up in one word what you're learning in life, what would it be? It was something I had been thinking about a lot, so the answer came quickly impermanence. Change has easily been my greatest teacher and rejection of change has been my greatest cause of sorrow. Happy rising. Uh, Just getting ready to go and have coffee with a friend and look who decides to pay me a visit. Lovely, lovely, lovely. This journey has led me through some powerful realizations of how effective a five minute task can be and the power that is ignited when we take care of our space. If we put a dish in the sink or notice crumbs on the floor, why are we really avoiding it? The effort is little to none. And if we calculate it at under five minutes of a task, then it actually realistically will take one or two minutes. And in which we're able to celebrate those small wins and water small habit seeds that lead us to a heightened self-awareness. A lot of internal energy seeps into our external space and when done in reverse, taking care of physical space to encourage a loving mental cleanup can make all the difference in building healthy habits and cultivating a healthy thought pattern. This is all through trial and error, of course, and it takes time to get to know yourself, but it all starts when you start trying new things. For an example, I've been saying yes to a lot of plans, and I've been the one to reach out to relationships that I haven't been in touch with for a while, branching out, making new friends, asking to go to coffee, or starting a new creative project with other artists. I've turned to friends I feel safe with to go to outings or events with while staying true to my socializing journey. I have found journaling to be incredibly healing and therapeutic, especially when there might not be a specific person to turn to at the time. I've had to remember to be kind to myself because there are moments of deep sadness, realizing the new boundaries that need to be made to self-preserve and deeply heal. That is okay. Making space both physically and mentally for healing is vital for lasting growth. In this process, I've been able to be approached by emotions that I'm not as familiar with on how to deal with, especially anger and deep sadness. And I had to literally teach myself to respect these emotions equally as I do happiness, peace, joy, etc. It's not about getting rid of feelings deemed as negative or unhealthy. Just beyond, beyond angry. best way I can describe how this is going to help by sitting with what you're feeling is by understanding the first time when you were one year old and you learned to walk and you scratched your knee for the first time, the world felt so heavy and your, your pain was so real. And it was terrifying because you never knew how to really understand what just happened but now you're older and you've scratched your knee millions of times and you know the steps to recovery you know what to do next so it's less scary now you're more equipped with the steps of the solution rather than being really fearful of what's happening and it doesn't take away from any of the pain it you are so so validated by the pain. It's still very real. It doesn't go away. It doesn't get less and less every time it happens, but you become stronger by knowing. There really is no such thing as an unhealthy emotion. What turns it unhealthy is when we avoid approaching it authentically. 
This can look like burying it, avoiding it, or creating a false narrative. And I'm learning a huge and wonderfully valuable lesson to take full accountability for those feelings by being there for them. Turns out that is what is meant to be. Like, am I hurting? Yes. But also, I feel finally like I'm approaching this freeing, accepting phase. And I don't know how long this will last, but this is the first time I've ever felt freedom. <laughs> I danced really hard and I have a blister on my toe. I'm dedicating more time to doing things that I love that help me translate more of my feelings. Slowly, I feel stronger and more experienced with what once was scary and unfamiliar. I return to love when I feel overwhelmed with newness. I return to the divine trust knowing that everything in my life has unfolded the way it has because times like these are temporary and yet essential for growth. And that gets us to where we were meant to go. I lean into presence and unconditional love for this human experience because without times like these, we would never know how good it can really get. What a blessing it is to be this intimate with healing and revive the relationship with self. To have loved someone so deeply and to trust myself to recover from releasing them, redirecting my energy back to self, to feel whole, to feel complete. The journey is long, but well worth it. Based on the opinions of others or for others, so podcasts anything that's just filling the air at this moment which maybe in a small way it feels like i'm avoiding silence or loneliness i'm like integrating silence and alone time and distraction free time very slowly um i set up a meditation corner which oh, i'm over the moon about and i've just felt like this is the time for meditation, for stillness, for inward connection. I've I listened to this nearly eight hour uh, hypnosis meditation <laughs> on YouTube. There's a hypnosis meditation, which sounds crazy. And I also bought a heartbreak workbook. When I say I'm going all in, I'm going all in. I'm still turning to every little video and vlog and blog and podcast and book for some reason it does help because i know i'm not alone and i think heartbreak is very lonely you think oh my my heartbreak my situation was very you know yes it's unique no one heartbreak is alike no one relationship is alike but there's a lot of things that don't make any sense when it comes to the conclusion or the completion of a relationship very hard to take what you have as your baseline what is or the story and keep it as that and not build on that and add to it as you know victim playing or because every time you tell a story i mean i'm sure you've heard this like if you recall a memory from childhood your story telling that memory changes slightly every single time and it's really hard to keep the same story with the same facts and if it's still raw, exclude the feelings. Like, how do you do that? Especially when you don't know information. And it's so, so, so hard to live life um, in a new lens, in a new perspective, with new challenges, new experiences, so much newness, so much raw earth for you to plant new seeds on and just not understand why the storm happened in the first place that wiped everything clean. You're like, what? But why? Especially when you thought you knew everything you had before was so secure and so deeply rooted and then it all just left. And now you, you are given this beautiful blessing, this opportunity of a new life to be whoever you want, to try anything you ever wanted to try, anything new. There is total freedom, total liberation from this journey. And yet we, we hold on to why. 
I don't know if there will ever be power in knowing because it's almost more powerful to never know the answer and be loving enough to move on choosing you as your reason. It's not about letting them go or losing them. It's about returning them. I'm trying to refocus and reconnect with myself and tune back in and that is it is so tremendously difficult to be compassionate with yourself as you're going through so much pain because when you're in pain you're in fight or flight and you're trying to clench onto literally anything there is this massive storm that you have absolutely no idea if you're going to survive but the survival rate of heartbreak is 100%. It's 100%. You will survive. We will survive. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I struck my own chord. <laughs> There's something really powerful about being able to show up for yourself in times like this. And this isn't like the one and only time that we'll experience such energy that written holds that's held in our heart uh, anyway <sighs> thanks for holding space for me as <laughs> i'm incredibly uh just emotionally raw i would say so anything and everything could be it could be as light as a feather on top of a mountain of things that i'm slowly one by one picking up looking at appreciating and then reallocating it wherever it needs to go but thank you for holding me in this time because i don't i genuinely do not know how else to channel it this feels so right to to share to relate to resonate to hear your stories to absorb love and energy just by your presence and so anyway i just really i'm really really appreciative and i I love you all very much and I, I know there is so much growth happening for everyone right now and so if we can just all lean into that as a collective imagine how powerful we'll be imagine how much love we'll be able to give just any and every experience that this human life has to offer so I love you all thank you mm -hmm.